So today I want to talk about cheeky tactics with colors. So what do I mean? So what do they do? There's 15 characters. How many people play Guilty Gear? We have no idea. Hundreds of thousands. No way to know. One thing they do and have done in fighting games for a long time is that they're color palettes. So you have default soul, but here you can scroll and pick golden soul for a lot of money from the desert, green soul from the woods, right? You can pick various colors of each character. But what if there were colors that were hard to see on a stage or like just gave you some type of a little advantage? So in particular, I know, for example, Street Fighter V had this quite a bit as there are a ton of guest costumes that make it hard to see like characters limbs or maybe their colors are like just extra dark that make it hard to see what's going on. I think one that was really stand out for me personally was Gil has a Pyron costume from Darkstalkers where like he partly disappears and stuff. So one, very accurate to the character, but two, really hard to play against, especially cause for example, you can't see him like EX flash. So Strive actually has one of these. There's probably more that I'm not gonna list. And I'm gonna share one with you that I use for a very long time, but not in Guilty Gear. So it involves this character, uh, color palette number two, Zato. White Zato, white snow stage. If you don't play this game, so you might not think this is that bad. Maybe like the shading is kind of weird and stuff like that. But there are some moves where Zato like kind of merges with his shadow, Eddie. So one example is with his double jump because he doesn't have one. So normal characters, they have like one, two jumps. But instead Zato can fly. So let's see what happens if I jump into the snow and fly. I am gone. I'm invisible. I'm not really invisible, but it's really hard to see him. Like, frankly, <laughs> the only thing you can really see is like his eyes. It's actually kind of creepy. You can't even see his teeth or anything. But this also applies to Zato's attacks as well with Eddie. Especially Eddie himself, the shadow. That's that white blob of snow with purple behind me. But you might not think it's that bad though, because there's parts of the stage where it's not so bad to see him. Like here. But Guilty Gear Strive is not like normal Arxis games and you can transition the stage. So in particular, there's three phases to this stage and this one is probably the hardest one. So you're just kind of in a, the woods, there's a lot of snow around and here's Eddie just chilling. To make matters a little worse, he has other moves where he kind of like transforms or disappears. So he has like break the law where he goes underground for a little bit. This stage already has some like minor distractions like the snow and stuff, but the white color Zato here in particular is just like extra, that extra bit of like, nah, let's play somewhere else. But like I said, it's not that common for this to happen in like modern anime games, but I do have a really sneaky example from back in the day that I used basically my entire run of playing this game. This game being Melty Blood. So specifically, it was actress again as well. So my original main is this character, Akiha Vermillion. I used her for a very long time in Akadenza, basically my whole time playing Akadenza, my first fighting game. But when this game came out, I wasn't really feeling her. They changed a lot of stuff about her that I kind of didn't like. So while she had buffs, she also just felt too different. I, I just wasn't feeling confident. So after some deliberation, I moved to Kohaku, who has always been a really popular character in actress again. But instead of picking the common Crescent Moon style, I pick the much more uncommon half moon style. So one of the things that makes her stand out is that she has a command grab that she can combo full. But the other important thing is that instead of having plants, she has these bombs. It's very important. Pay attention to the bomb. So she has three versions of the bomb. We will not talk about this third one because it has nothing to do with my cheeky strategy. Instead, we have to talk about the A version of the bomb and the B version of the bomb. So the A version of the bomb is right there. So you actually cannot parry this move. It is very rare in Melty Blood that you can't parry moves. And this is the B version of the bomb. So this actually doesn't really go off right away. It, you can hit it around the screen and bounce it around and then it'll explode eventually. So A bomb. Be bomb. Think of it as like a Faust bomb. I want you to look a little closer though. So the A bomb is kind of like this greenish color and then the B bomb is also kind of like a greenish color. So what happens if we pick not default Kohaku? Melty Blood has a ton of colors. It has 36 colors actually. So while these have a bunch of like various color palettes, 
the last page is actually all variants of their normal self, I guess. Like, let's say just different clothes instead of, like, straight up different hair, different everything. So, this is a color that I picked quite a bit in tournaments, actually. So, here's the A-bomb. Kind of like a bright orangey color. And here's the B-bomb. It's a brown color. Okay, so now we've established that each color Kohaku has a different bomb color. Maybe you can see where I'm going with this. So we're going to be looking at two colors in particular to put the last piece together. So if for some reason you feel like digging up old footage of me playing this game in tournaments, you will see I pick this color quite a bit. This is actually a color I picked based off like inspiration. So the main reason why I played this character was a player from Japan who used to play my character. So we played the same character, Akio Vermillion, switched to Half Moon Kohaku and was performing ridiculously. Like, I, like well is an understatement. He was crushing it. So I was like, well, he's an, he's an Akio Vermillion player too, so maybe it'll work for me, right? So I used that color originally. But after messing around and looking around a little bit, we discovered the powers. So we have color palette number 24, which is what I used originally, uh, you know, inspiration color, and color palette number 18. So this is color palette number 24's A bomb. So this is Kia bomb, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so black bomb that explodes. And then this is the B bomb, the one that you can hit. So it's a red bomb, you can hit it, it explodes. Now this is color 18's A bomb. It's a red bomb that explodes. And then the B bomb is a black bomb that just sits there. So you get the idea. This character, the bombs change depending on what color you use and there's overlap between the colors. So there's more than this pair, by the way, that have like one color has the A bomb and B bomb as one color palette. And then the other color has it reverse. There's at least off the top of my head, there's probably three more combinations in this one. While the stage color thing is pretty common in fighting games, for example, multiple players, while this is a really cool stage with a really hype track, there's a lot of moves that are very simple and very red. And I'm saying simple specifically, as opposed to another fan favorite stage where these red attacks are much, much more clearly visible. Again, these are pretty common examples in fighting games. Like there's, you, you can probably find at least one of these per game. Quite frankly, I made a video about DNF talking about stages. And the reason why this even came back in my head was because I couldn't see Enchantress moves on the volcano stage. However, I do feel like ones where like the characters moves change colors is like an extra level of sneaky. The trickiest thing about Half Moon Kohaku is that even if you were like, oh, well, I don't want you using either of these two colors. As I said before, there are a couple of more combinations that have these kind of palette swap bombs. So this was a really, really hard one to deal with. I kept this basically in the pocket forever, <laughs> like my whole time playing this game. So if you have any examples of costumes being hard to see on stages or even the much trickier moves changing colors depending on your palette and they're interchangeable then definitely feel free leave them in the comment section below i love reading examples in the comments as usual like and subscribe if you feel like it and we'll see y'all next time peace out